All right. And before do this, all right. Well, welcome everybody to Parent Talk. This is our first um, session this year, which is really exciting. I'm so excited to have everybody come back. Um, tonight's session is on practical self care and wellness. Um, so, Thread is the last child care resource and referral network. We offer services to families, early childhood educators, early childhood education programs, and communities statewide. And tonight, I'm very thankful for the Alaska Children's Trust. Um, Parent Talk is supported by a grant through the Alaska Children's Trust um, for this year, which is we're very, very thankful for. Um, Alaska Children's Trust's goal is to ensure all ch Alaska children grow up in a family and community that provides them with the tools and resources necessary to make their dreams come true. Their goal supports um, their mission to prevent child abuse and neglect throughout Alaska. And um, their, their tagline is that together we can um, and child abuse and neglect in Alaska. And so I feel very thankful for their partnership and their support um, of Parent Talk this year. So thank you so much to Alaska Children's Trust. So I'm very excited for our first session of Parent Talk to welcome our wonderful presenter, David Westlake, who um, is with Turia, Alaska. Um, David is an Anchorage-based yoga teacher who works to make the practice accessible and relevant to people in their everyday lives. He's the co-founder, along with his wife, of Turia, Alaska, which provides trauma-informed yoga and meditation practices to those in settings outside of the usual places you might find yoga in. Turia, teaches within the state prison system, McLaughlin Youth Center, Cordova Center, and in other at-risk environments, as well as working with the Alaska Pipeline, GCI, and the native village of Port, Port Hyden. I feel very thankful to have David here tonight. I've been able to benefit from his practices as well, and um, just feel very grateful for all the work that you and your wife do um, across Alaska. So without further ado, um, David, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thanks so much, first of all, for inviting me. And, uh, you know, I always feel very honored because, you know, in my eyes, I'm just a person <laughs> like you, like anyone else who stumbles into some type of service work and uh, wants to make a difference, you know, and for whatever reason. So welcome everyone who's here. And uh, I'll just say a little bit more about um, my work and a little bit about my background, just to set the context. Welcome, friends. And uh, and that way you also have a little more knowledge about just who's talking to you, you know, who's this like head, this body, you know, in this virtual chamber that's um, possibly speaking. So as you heard, my name is David Westlake. And uh, before I was a yoga teacher, I actually worked um, with children for um, almost 15 years. I was a uh, independent school teacher. I worked in um, some different um, alternative schools and uh, in different environments both outside of the traditional classroom and within. And um, it was really a pretty amazing work, you know, but uh, at some point I thought, gosh, I just kind of want to do something different. And this led me into starting to practice yoga on my own, which I had been doing for a long time. And then it eventually walked me into becoming a yoga teacher, whatever that may mean, you know, and uh, this led into working in studios and gyms, you know, all the places we think of yoga. Right. And um, going to a lot of the places where you think of yoga too, you know, India, LA, New York, you know, like the United States places of yoga. But for me, there was one thing that was missing, and that was this connection to the broader world. You know, I missed being with people who were um, in these places of hunger, you know, not necessarily physical hunger, but working with um, the needs that were out there. And I wasn't sure exactly how to bring yoga into that because when I was in the yoga world, really immersed in it, you know, it was very hard to see how do these two worlds interconnect, you know, these very beautiful boutique studios or gym memberships or online, you know, web like things you could used to take before we're all doing it in COVID. And I know it just came to me like, gosh, what if I started teaching yoga in, in prison, you know, and it was just like one of those lightning moments that maybe you've had too in your life where you just thought, Oh yeah, that's what I want to do. And uh, I find personally that when you have those moments, the kind of like inward calling moments, there's usually some kind of external confirmation. And literally like within days, I started meeting people who 
worked in the prison and we're like, oh yeah, we could do something like that. And eight weeks later, I found myself walking into Anchorage, Anchorage prison and uh, starting to teach classes. And this has just grown, you know, since 2018. And we got asked to be in all sorts of places, you know, North Star, McLaughlin, DOC, corporations started talking to us, the military started speaking to us, really just everyone. And it was really an awesome ability to step out of these traditional settings that maybe aren't so traditional where yoga is taught and to take the basics of being grounded, of being in the moment, of realizing that the imperfections we may think we have and the inabilities that we may think we have are just part of who we are, right? And no matter what, we actually have what we need inside. And that there's also a possibility to step out of the patterns that we've often found ourselves in. So that was a little bit of the context. And um, you know, I could tell all sorts of stories about places we've been to, but for me personally, uh, I just feel so grateful and transformed by the work. And uh, sometimes even if something doesn't seem to be a success, the different places we go, ultimately we've experienced transformation. Myself, my wife, the volunteers and the subcontractors who work with us. And, um, you know, I, I wish that for you too. You know, whatever comes out of this experience this evening, maybe something I say touches something in you that's already there, you know, and maybe even share that at the end and we can talk a little bit. As far as what we'll do tonight, um, it's, uh, if I was to put it in technical terms, it's a chair practice, meaning that we'll sit and we'll move a little bit and connect to our breath. And this is very much on purpose that it's a chair practice because in these days that we found ourselves in, even if we have an active life, we're sitting a lot, you know, we're watching screens um, or we might just be sitting a lot in some other job or in our lives. And even in those moments where we can't just get up and walk, go to the gym, take the dog outside, whatever that might be, we can pause and we can breathe, maybe move a little bit and find some stillness inside of ourselves, which I think is always there, <laughs> you know, just theory I have. And then I know for myself that when I do that, it helps me remember, you know, my purpose, why I'm doing what I do anyway that I'm human, that the people around me are human. <laughs> there might be a larger kind of like thing at play in the whole story. So that's where we're headed. I'm gonna invite you now to find a seat and um, find a chair that you could be comfortable in. And uh, if you wanna move around a little bit, you know, I can't see you, so that's great. You can take all the comfort you need and, and get comfortable. So, you know, I have like a, a little bit of an office chair I'm sitting, you can't really see it. So I'm gonna come forward so that my feet are um, flat on the ground and really connected. And for those just joining, it's perfect. We're just gonna do a little seated practice for about 30 minutes. So you'll notice I'm in my living room and that's also kind of on purpose. You know, if you might have a couch you're sitting in or you might be more in a comfy chair or you maybe you're sitting more in like a kitchen type chair. But I would say once you find your seat, you come forward a little bit so that your feet can be really flat on the ground. You might put a blanket under them or a pillow under them. And if someone out there wants to stand and follow along in standing or even be on the ground, you can just modify and make this your practice. So I'm just gonna imagine that you're moving around, finding where you need to be, settling into your place. And then once you've settled, <laughs> take a couple of moments really feel where you are don't feel rushed and if you can make yourself 10 percent more comfortable in your environment just try that i don't think we're often asked in our lives to be comfortable <laughs> you know so it's important to cultivate that in ourselves to know that we have the authority to have that let's begin I'm gonna start actually by looking away from you. Not that you're not important, but just to give my eyes a break and you might wanna do the same. You know, I don't know if you've been looking at the computer screen all day or maybe in meetings, maybe in Netflix, I don't know, but just look away from the screen a little bit. Close your eyes or you know, just blink them a few times. 
Now you could stay like this, really the whole practice. If you want to turn back to me, you can. If you haven't closed your eyes, here's another invitation. Close your eyes and just start listening to the space around you. We call this dropping in. Myself and the people I work with, dropping in is a chance for us really to drop into the moment. With your eyes closed, go ahead and notice the world around you. That might seem strange, right? We're so used to looking, but just listen. You might hear the sounds of your world coming to you in the background. You might hear the sounds of my world coming to you from the background. The world is really relatively rarely quiet, but we can find our silence inside ourselves. You can keep your eyes closed or just open them and softly look down a little bit. I'm gonna invite you to take some breaths in and out through your mouth. You could lick the lips a little bit, swallow if you want to, take your tongue around the mouth, just starting to maybe take in the quality of the air, you know? I'll dare say you could even taste it. <laughs> What's it like? Then you can start directing breath into your nostrils. You might be stuffed up or maybe you've been sick, hopefully not, but so you might feel a little stuffed up, but you can still just take some breaths in, even if you have to breathe the mouth more. Maybe there's a smell in the room, fragrance, a whole other quality with the nose. And if you're starting to feel, am I doing this right? What should I be feeling? That's part of the experience, right? Of just dropping into the moment. I'm gonna to count to five. And at the end of five, if your eyes are still closed, you can open them. In five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna open my eyes, look towards you. If you wanna to look towards me or just you know, open them and look around the room, maybe you look around now and you take in things that you've been looking at all day, but possibly for the first time, walls, colors, you know, textures. Just drop it into the moment. So you notice that we've used our senses, these things that are naturally part of us. Taste, smell, hearing, seeing. Let's not forget about touching. If you're open, take your hands, <laughs> rub them together a little bit. You could go fast, you could go slow. Just start to cultivate a little bit of feeling in the fingertips. Now I'm gonna start to massage the side of my face and I'll take my fingers and I like to use my peace fingers and put them right here in the temples of my eyes and just start to rub a little bit. And as I'm doing that, I let my shoulders drop into my body. Again, if you feel like the screen is distracting you a little bit, you can look away or just drop your eyes. You could close your eyes the entire time we're together. And experiment with how much pressure, you know, maybe you push in a little bit more, maybe it's more rounded. I'm gonna to start to move my fingertips up towards the center of my forehead. You might do the same. You could take your fingertips onto the skull. Have you ever massaged your own skull a little bit? Press in, there's this spot on top of our head, which when we're really young, you know, is soft and open to the world. It kind of gets hard as we get older. Maybe the ears. I wouldn't do my ears too firm because my AirPods might fall out, but you could pull on your ears a little bit. I'm gonna start coming down onto the jaw, that incision point where the jaw comes together. And if you are massaging your face, try to press into the surface of the skin. And the reason we do that is because there are these natural hormones. I'm starting to move around my mouth, maybe around the nose. Oh, this is a good spot for sinuses. Breathe in a little bit. You could even shake out your hands in between and come back. If you find a spot that's really interesting, you could stay there a little bit and just cultivate sensation. Maybe a place I haven't even mentioned. But if you do self-massage, press past the skin line into the bone, into the fascia. This releases a, a whole hormone and chemical into our body, which sends a positive signal to the nervous system. I'm getting into the neck a little bit. 
It's a sensitive place to touch. You could even, you know, touch your pulse. Have you ever just done that? Just for, just for the sake of being alive, feeling that movement of life inside yourself. The back of the neck. Wow, there's this huge group of muscles there and nerves. It's right in the back of your head. You may just press in there and push your fingertips in. Now, as we're doing this, try breathing through your nose if you can. The reason I'm asking you to do that, I'm going down to my ribs now. This is really the goods right here, pressing the fingertips into the, the bones, into that little gap between them. You know, this, ooh, you feel the lungs a little bit. If you dare, you can go a little bit into the arms. But I'm starting to breathe in my nose when I'm not talking. And the reason I'm doing that is there's a whole other message to the nervous system just by breathing into the nose. There are these membranes inside our nostrils. It's really amazing. And they're also connected to the pleasure principle inside of ourself. So when I breathe in and out through my nose, I'm actually cultivating positivity. Isn't that amazing, right? Just connecting to the nervous system and the nervous system you know, rolls down through our body and ends down here in the stomach. So we can even take our hands and massage the stomach a little bit. This can be awkward for folks, but you might even press your fingers in a little bit or make circular movements on the stomach. Just breathing as you need to breathe, possibly in and out through the nose. I'll count to five and we'll let go of this self-massage in four, three, two, one. I'm going to take my hands and just bring them down to my lap. Maybe you're resting them on your thigh or you might have one hand on the other hand. Let's bring our awareness down to our feet. You can't see my feet. I can't see yours, but we can certainly feel not maybe each other's feet, but our own feet. So if you're barefoot, you can press down on the floor. If you have socks on, you push down into the floor. Even if you have shoes, you press down into the floor. You can lift your toes a little bit, wiggle them and set them back down. And when you set your toes back down, really press them into the floor. And then begin to notice how your legs are responding. If you push down into your feet, where do you feel it? Maybe in the thighs, maybe in the calves, maybe in the knees, maybe nowhere, you know, just notice. Meanwhile, breathing in and out through the nose, full inhales, full exhales. Let's bring our awareness up to our stomach. Next time you breathe in, here's an invitation, right? You breathe in and see if you could follow the breath all the way down. Imagine like your spine is a channel and the breath is like liquid. So you follow it down and then you follow it all the way back out. Let's just try that five times. You might do it more or less than I do. Just two more times for me. All the way down to my stomach. My stomach's actually pushing into my waist a little bit and then I release, the stomach draws in towards the spine. One more time for me. Now, if you'd like, you could take your breath a little bit higher. So you breathe in and you take your breath right below the ribs, above the belly button, right? This place of the diaphragm, maybe you know that that is this huge muscle. It's like a second heart inside of ourselves. When you breathe in, you might even feel a little bit of a bulge there, a contraction. And when you exhale, you feel it pull, release, Couple more times. You may not feel anything, you know, but your hand is just below the ribs and you're breathing above the belly button, below the ribs. Now, what if we breathe into the chest? So I'm just gonna take my hands and stack them on my chest. I'm gonna press my fingers a little bit into the skin, get all that nervous system stuff. Feel my ribs completely expand all the way down to the bottom of the lungs and then let go of it. Try it a couple more times. You might be starting to feel, am I doing this right? <laughs> All those perfection stories, yeah, they're just like never ending, right? Okay, <sighs> let's just sit for a moment. Press in your feet. Maybe wiggle your spine side to side. All 
right, let's continue. We've actually done a lot early. If you think about how much time we've been together and really how little time we've been together, but we've done so much. We've dropped in using our senses. We have scanned our body with our awareness, starting with our toes. And then we moved with the breath, you know, all the way up through us. We massaged our own body. Now we can move a little bit. So these movements are technically chair yoga, right? But uh, I hesitate sometimes to use the word yoga because then our mind jumps to particular images. Think of these as movements that you might make on your own and that you can actually modify and shift whenever you need them. Tonight, somewhere in the future. They don't belong to me or they don't belong to anybody. So I'm sitting, my feet are on the ground, and I'm going to invite you to move your spine side to side a little bit, right? And when your spine moves side to side, you could lean forward, lean back, and just begin to feel what is it like to have an upright spine? I didn't say straight. <laughs> I didn't say make it a line, just an uprightness. Each and one of you is, is going to have a different experience of what that means. So I'm rocking a little bit side to side and forward and back. You can play with the angles of your chin. I'll just count to three and then we'll bring that to stillness in three, two, one. Go ahead and reconnect to your breath. See if you can feel the breath, maybe in the nostrils, maybe in the throat, in the lungs, somewhere in your body, feel the breath. If you get distracted during this practice, come back to the sensations of the breath. All right, first suggestion. I'm going to tilt my head over towards your right and drop my chin a little bit. So you may or may not feel anything. So this is my, this is what I would suggest, right? You just kind of lean into it a little bit and you move your head and neck until you feel something. And that feeling, what is it, right? You want to feel sensation. You don't want it to be pain. Maybe it feels really good but you wanna to try to shift somewhere where you can be for a few moments. And the sensation of our body actually helps us be present. You might take your hands and massage your neck a little bit. You might close the eyes. You could look away from the screen and do this practice. Just listen to my words. I'm gonna to count to five and we'll lift our head and we'll go the other direction. In five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Here I go, rolling my head up, other direction. So I'm going to offer a, a lot of physical suggestions. And these aren't like a alignment mandates or absolutes. These are just things that I found help me feel something. They may help you. So I lean a little bit. I'll roll my opposite shoulder back. And I'll drop the chin and just move the chin around and seeking a place where I start to feel. It could be a stretch in the neck, it could be in the jaw. And once you've moved around for a couple of moments, then you just, you find yourself and you just be where you are. And you return to breathing, maybe in the nose if it's possible, perhaps all the way down to the belly. I'll count to five and four, three, two, one, I'm bringing my awareness back towards you. Next invitation. This is called cow and cat. So I'm going to roll my ribs towards you a little bit. Then I'm going to pull my stomach in. Now this could be really subtle. Like for example, you could breathe in and you just feel the expansion of the ribs. You feel the expansion of the stomach. And then on the exhale, you feel the belly pull in and you start to feel the chest pull in. It could also be a full movement of letting your chest expand, lifting your chin, rounding into a little more concave shape, coming back to convex. So you just follow your breath, right? Pulling in a little bit, rolling your awareness back out, just breathing in and breathing out, cow cat in this chair form. Now, some of you might be making this very organic. For example, like you might find yourself rolling a little bit to a side. You just follow that, you know. Maybe you're rolling to the other side as well. So I'll just count to five again, and you do as many as you need. And if you're moving with your breath, just keep doing that. In five, four, three, two, 
one. Let's, let's call this seated mountain for now, right? Our feet flat on the ground, toes actively pressing into the floor, the bottom of the feet equally maintaining our body weight, our hips resting towards the front of our chair, our spine, you know, you might wiggle it a little bit, let it grow up out of your waist. And your chin, you know, check the angles of your head. Let's move into a twist. So I'm gonna take my upper body and move towards your right. So I push down into my feet and here I go. I'm just gonna move this way. So you can't really see my hands or how I'm doing it. And that's kind of intentional on my side. I didn't want you to start getting too hung up on whether you're doing it right or wrong. It's enough to know your feet are on the floor and your upper body is just twisting, right? Now you could do this at any point of your day. You could just twist. You could also drop the knees a little bit towards each other. This might activate your belly, your abs. It also might affect your breathing. So you come back to the breath and you just keep going until you feel something. Now I've done a lot of twists today. So, you know, my range of motion might be different than yours. Once you are somewhere where you can just be, I'll count to five and you take as many breaths completely in and completely out as you need. In five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna turn back towards you, <sighs> settle here. Let's just give ourselves three breaths. Maybe it's a cow and a cat and we'll go the opposite direction. Here we go. I'm gonna shift. Same thing, I keep my feet grounded, push my toes into the floor, feel my feet distributing weight evenly. I could flex my belly a little bit on exhales. I'm keeping my opposite hip really heavy on the chair and lifting my stomach and my ribs out of my waist and moving upper body. You can look over your shoulder. <laughs> You could drop the chin. This movement can be, you know, wide and expressive. It can also be very subtle. Maybe no one even barely can see you moving. And notice how your breath is. Is it becoming shallow? Are you starting to intellectualize this experience? So you just breathe in. You notice how the breath is different in a twist. And I'll count to five. We'll go back to center in five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to turn back towards you and roll my shoulders. That's all I'm doing. Just rolling the shoulders up, dropping them down. This is a good time to breathe too, right? Reconnect your breath. As we're breathing, you might want to add this into your breath. Try to make your exhale a little bit longer. And just know that these things that I'm offering you know, they're not panaceas, they're not magic potions or formulas. You might be stressed, you might do them, you still might be stressed afterwards. You know, <laughs> you might like be angry, you might do them, you still might be angry, but it's just an opportunity to, to reconnect. So you're not so powerless over like the reactions that live in all of us. You, me, for sure, you know. I'm sure none of you have ever had a reaction, <laughs> right? Let's come back together. Now, here's an opportunity. We're gonna move with our breath. Sometimes we refer to this as a flow in yoga, just moving with breath back and forth. So let's just come to our seated mountain. If you can breathe in through the nose, go ahead. Or just imagine if you have to breathe through the mouth, maybe you're stuffed up. Follow the breath all the way down through the spine, all the way to the belly and the tailbone. Let it go all the way out of you. Next time you breathe in, nice and tall. And on the exhale, we'll move towards your right. So we're exhaling towards the right, inhaling back to center, exhaling other direction. <laughs> Let's try that three more times. So I'm gonna come back to center and then three sets, exhaling towards right, inhaling to center, exhaling to left, inhaling to center, Two more times on your own. You might find that your breath changes. Like maybe you inhale one direction rather than exhale. 
Moving with the breath, it sometimes can help our nervous system settle a little bit. That flow-like quality, that dance-like quality. Next time I go to the left, it's gonna be the last time I go to your left. And then I'm gonna come back towards you. And this time I'm gonna bring my hands. I'm gonna lift my hands, just roll the wrists a little bit. And now I just invite you to do the similar gesture, but now our hands are involved. So on the next exhale, I'm pushing out towards the right coming back to center, over to the left. You can put your hands on your chest in between. Touching the chest, at least for me, reminds me that I'm connected to others. Because even yoga can be a job, right? Working with people can be a job. Even the things we do for service for others, it can turn into a job. So it's good to remember that we're doing this for a reason, for connection. I'm gonna do one more set on each side. Back to center. Let's just stay here for a couple moments. You press your fingers below the skin, right? You might feel the beating of the heart. You might feel the expression of the breath in your ribs coming back to you. If you seek it, it's there. The body is so subtle. The breath is so subtle. The world can be so noisy. I'm gonna take my arms out. This is called cactus arms. So you'll notice I started breathing a little bit stronger on my exhale, the last couple of movements we did. So I'm inviting you to do the same. So you breathe in and you, and you sweep it down. I'm gonna do that three more times. One more time. Then now, coming back to cactus arms, I'm gonna press up to the ceiling and I'm gonna draw it down. I'm gonna do that with breath. I'm gonna draw it down. You can just continue making that movement, right? Or pressing up. I find this really helpful when I'm having a bad day. It's like fists, I pull down and I press away. You can make it very active, like, you know, or a little more subtle. Kind of depends where you are, what you need. I'll do that three more times. <sighs> Let's come back together. <laughs> if you had an animal, you know, you may have been doing that. Cat or a dog may have scurried across away from you, or someone else in the other room is like, gosh, what are they doing? You know, but we just come back to ourselves. That self consciousness, you know is sometimes a huge hurdle of our self-care. Now here's a challenge, but a friendly challenge. What if we put all of that stuff in together and we just move through all of those different places? Don't worry if you haven't like memorized them or don't remember, I'll just guide us and we'll step through them together. So let's return. And maybe you'll notice how all of these places we go to, there might be more openness or a completely different experience than when we first stepped into them. So find your seat, move around a little bit. If you need to take a drink, I'm gonna take a drink and, and uh, then we'll settle back into our practice. Let's start with our hands here. Let's drop in, close your eyes, listen to the space around you. And when you hear something, it's okay to identify it, but don't judge it. You, me, <laughs> definitely myself, we judge the world around us all the time. So you just listen. You can name it. Fridge, washing machine, bubbling radiators, your children in the other room. Take some breaths in and out through the mouth. Flood the lungs with air. You can even move your tongue around or chew the air a little bit. Swallow. If your hands can stay in the chest, do so. If you need to put them down, do so. After you've breathed in and out through the mouth, licked your lips, tasted the quality of the air, bring your awareness to your nose and take some sniffs or 
soft breaths in and out through the nose. Smelling what you smell. Taking in another quality of the air, a fragrance. And then we'll open our eyes, but I'm gonna drop my chin, open my eyes. Now I'm looking around the room. I can look towards you, I can look up, look around. I'm noticing colors. I'm not critiquing anything or whether I like something or don't like something, whether something needs to be fixed, you know, that's always going through my mind or straightening or I'm just looking around the room. And I'll take my hands and I'm going to start to rub and we'll return to our, our first body scan with our hands. Let's start at the top of the head. So I'm going to take my hands and come up to the top of the skull, press into my hair a little bit. Have you just rubbed your hands through your hair yet today? Oh, it's a nice sensation, right? Above the ears, maybe in the back of the skull, your fingers could press in a little bit. If you wanna massage your ears, please do so. The jaw. I'm gonna start climbing back up towards the temples next to my eyes, and I'm gonna spend a couple of moments there. You might find this really helpful. You could use your middle fingers or your pointer finger and your middle finger but you wanna press into the skin and work with different kinds of effort, like how hard do you wanna push or how soft? Do you even know how it is that you like to be touched? We have so much to discover you know, about ourselves. And the more we discover about ourselves, the more we learn how to take care of ourselves, which is a huge practice. I'm moving my hands into the forehead. The more we can be of service to others, I'm going to take my hands and start moving down my nose across the sinus lines. If you're kind of stuffed up, this is a place where you really can bring in a lot of air. On the cheeks, down into the ribs, pressing fingertips in. You might still be someplace where, you know, where we started, and that's fine. You don't have to be moving with me. I'm just pressing the different spots in my body. And I'm going to bring my hands down to my stomach, push into my stomach. And ultimately, I'm going to bring them down to the thighs. And I'll just count to five. And you finish massaging where you're massaging. And you bring your hands down, if you wish. In five, four, three, two, one. See if you can exhale. Let your exhale be longer. Longer exhales release the nervous system, letting go of the parasympathetic fight or flight. Three more breaths like that, long exhale. A couple more times. In yoga, there's a practice called pranayama. It's always like translated as breath restriction. Who would like to do that? It's actually more about expanding your life energy. So when I breathe, I'm connecting to the cosmos, right? Connecting the world around me taking it in myself, and then I'm returning that energy back up. I'm in a relationship, whether I wanna be or not. Now we come into movement. So I'm gonna roll my shoulders, and I invite you to do it with your breathing. You could roll your shoulders up with the inhale, drop them down with the exhale. Maybe you roll them forward. We'll start to drop our head one direction and then the other. Move at your own pace. If you wanna follow my words and move with me, you're more than welcome. Dropping my shoulders, taking an inhale. Next time I exhale, I'm dropping my head over towards the right. Lifting back up, dropping in the direction. I'm going to do that again. We'll go back to the left or whatever direction you're going now. And then we'll twist. So I'm gonna use my inhale to recharge my body. I'm gonna use my exhale to empty and move in that direction. So here I go, I'm moving towards your right. I'll stay here for three breaths. Noticing how my feet are doing. Definitely not worrying about the thoughts of my mind. Maybe even smiling at them. Maybe even saying, thinking, <laughs> breathing. Next time I breathe in, I'm gonna to turn towards you and then move the opposite direction. 
find your breath. I'll just count to five. That's probably easier. In five, four, three, two, one. Coming back towards you one more time. Let's just move over here for one breath. And then back to center and then the other direction again. And then back to center and cow and cat. Rolling my ribs up a little bit. You can lift your chin if you want to. Maybe look up to the ceiling and then you could round forward, dropping your chin to your chest three times. See if you can involve the movement with the breath. Maybe you feel the, the breath moving you. You might hear your breath in the back of the throat. Next time I roll up, I'm going to take my arms up. And you're more than welcome to come with me. I'm going to lift up and then just pull the arms down. Three more times. Notice how your feet are being affected when you reach up. What if you push down into your feet and lift when you come down? I'm going to find cactus arms. Here I go lifting into my cactus arms or goal posts, if that's your metaphor, and then you release. Four more times. I'm going to use a little stronger breath. Two more times for me. I'm just going to expand out away from me for a couple moments. Roll my wrist. You can do the same if you'd like to. Maybe you rock your head side to side or make some circles with your head. If there's any movements you would like to take right now, you're free. You're so free to do that, you know. Now I'm bringing my hands down to my chest. You could press your fingers into the skin. You know, that releases the nervous system a little bit. You could wiggle. I think a friendly wiggle is a good thing. Let your next exhale be longer. And you're more than welcome to perhaps take four more breaths like that, just letting the exhale be all the way out. You could exhale out your mouth. You could close your eyes when you're finished. And my last invitation for this practice is that we just remain where we are for three whole minutes. This is more time and stillness than probably most of our society takes. And I don't mean that in a judgment. So in the next exhale, I'm just starting the time. My eyes are going to close. You can even look away from the screen a little bit if you've been looking the whole time. You can rest your hands on your lap or alongside your body. If you need to make a little bit of movement, you do so. I have a timer right in front of me. I'm watching it. I'll keep track of the time. I'll hold the space for us, both here in my world and I'll hold the space for wherever you are. But if you can give yourself these three minutes to pause, to breathe in and out, to be still, to remember that you are more than your thoughts, more than the stress, more than work, just more, and it's all inside you. Two minutes left. When the mind wanders, which it will, because you're human and the mind's job is to wander, you just come back to the breath. You feel it in your body. Maybe you feel your feet pressing to the ground or you press your hands into your own skin. And you remember that that sensation is real. And the thoughts they may or may not be.
Just one more minute left. As we prepare to come out of this silence together, I have one more offering. It's called humming bee breath. I'm gonna breathe in and as I exhale, it's just a gentle hum. Mm. Just the sound of breath moving on the exhale. Mm. Just a couple more times. Mm. I'm opening my eyes, I'm looking towards you, and uh, i just like to acknowledge whoever practiced. I bow to your wisdom, friends. May we all be free. <laughs> Thanks for coming along. Thanks for being open, being receptive. Thank you so, so much, David. Wow, what a beautiful time that was. Thank you for the space. Uh, um, opportunities to, to learn and to practice together and the affirmations. Um, I know as a mom and child care provider and um, just a person in general, I feel so grateful um, to just be here tonight in practice um, with you. So thank you for creating this time for us. Um, if thank anybody you. has questions or um, things that they'd like to write, please feel free to put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to keep their cameras off while we're recording right now. But if you want to, if you have any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I do have um, a couple to start us off while people are putting those um, in there. But since we do have a lot of parents and uh, providers here, David, do you have any suggestions or techniques for helping maybe parents and children regulate or practice mindfulness together um, during either big emotions or just during kind of some of their normal scheduled routines? That's a big question, right? I mean, really, when you're a parent, and I'm and I'm not a parent of a little one right now in my life, or, or really, you know, haven't really done a lot of that work. So everything I say is just coming from a teacher perspective, or just from my own experience. I mean, ultimately, I noticed for me that so much of the reaction that happens is going to really stem from myself. So like, sometimes, even before the crisis happens, the more I'm connected to myself, the less there might be a reaction, <laughs> you know, when it actually bubbles up, right? And as far as with kids, you know, I think it's really interesting to have kids see you do it, right? You would practice and they may be cynical, they may be <laughs> jaded about it, or they may, they may not believe it, right? But the more they see you cultivating that, I think there's something that happens, you know, I really do. I work with a, a particular young mom. She has two children and uh, it's, a, you know, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. Her husband, um, especially before COVID was working on the slope a lot back and forth. And for her, she just, you know, she brought these little, she brought these adorable little creatures kind of with her everywhere. So they've been exposed to her meditating, to her um, being in these mindfulness moments. And uh, her oldest one, he, he kind of is into it, you know, he sometimes talks about he's stressed out, he, he wants to meditate, <laughs> you know, but um, there is that experience, you know, and then you notice how during the practice, you know, I was like touching myself, you know, touch, yeah. being aware of the space. You know, I know for me that when I'm in moments of crisis with someone else, it's tempting for me just to fix it instead of really seeing what they might need or observing the situation, not going into that immediate reaction. And it's hard, you know, it's hard. <laughs> Those would be just my thoughts, you know, of course, 
it might be different for you. So don't take it as a formula, but. No, I, that's very, very valuable. I really appreciate all of those. And I know um, watching the chat, people are like, so true. Thank you. This is yeah, amazing. Yeah. So people are resonating um, <laughs> in the chat right now with this. Um, and then there's kind of this idea right now, as I was mentioning earlier to you, that with self-care in general, that it's kind of like a treat yourself moment where you have to go get a massage or a pedicure mm. or um something like that, but really self-care can be as simple as stretching and doing chair yoga, right? Yeah. And, and um, other other simple things. Do you have any like go-to self-care, simple things that you do throughout your day that um, seem uh, applicable or like practical that uh, don't seem like too big or overwhelming for people? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I'll just back up a little bit and kind of bracket and context text it just from, and this is only my personal feeling, friends. You know, we have been inundated with a branding and a marketing of so much of stuff that's just really innately ours as human beings, right? And one of those is being able to move, being able to breathe, being able to do whatever we want to do to ground ourselves. But somehow we're sold these things. We feel like, okay, if I'm gonna meditate, it's gotta be a certain way. I've gotta like be sitting a certain way. I've gotta have my app. If I'm gonna do yoga, I better get my membership. Oh my God, how can I afford that? I can't do yoga. And then the yoga practice has to look like it looks like in a class or on a video or a mindfulness has to look like the same sort of stuff. But everything I did in this practice is are things you can just cultivate into your whole life. You know, I have this little catchphrase, you know, pause, breathe, be still, remember, and it's for real. You know, I have to remind myself of that too. So I know for, for me, like in the morning I rise and I just, I get out of bed and I put my feet on the ground and uh, you know, it's not like a super ritual. I just take a couple of moments with my feet on the ground, take some breaths, <laughs> remember, you know, if I'm going through my day and it just is not going the direction I need it to, which is most days, really, you know, can we really ever plan it out? I really will take advantage of a self massage, you know, massaging around my eyes. And it seems so benign, but do we do it, right? No. Or what, is it, what does it take just to stop and, uh, you know, wrap your arms around yourself and just go like this? You could do that in Fred Meyer. No one will even blink an eye. In fact, most people are so not looking at anything we do because they're all looking at themselves like all of us do. So you can just always pause and stop. In yoga, there is this word, which you may have heard if you practice yoga, asana. Asana, and it's like forms, postures. But there's a certain idea that asana is really just your physical life and everything is the life and everything is the practice. And everything, you can approach it that way, right? You can make coffee. You could also make coffee, right? You can eat. You can also eat. And then you just remember that. I'm not saying live like a monk or any such thing, right? But just come back to your life. It's so rich, right? So rich. That's what I would suggest. And, you know, it's not a formula because I think it's important for you and all of you and me as well to start to cultivate those routines, those rhythms, and they're gonna lead somewhere for you. Yeah, that's what I would say to that. I appreciate that personally, almost as like a permission, right? Like oh, yeah. uh, give yourself the permission to, to pause and um, drink more water, yes. your face, take deep yeah. breaths. I have a, mm -hmm. um, a past presenter, her name's Woodry Burek, who also does some mindfulness um, and uh, self-care here in the community. And she taught me to use red lights as like breathing opportunities because everyone yeah. around you has to stop. And so use that moment if you're holding your breath, clenching your jaw, jaw whatever, mm -hmm. to, to take some deep breaths. And I've never looked at a red light differently or like i've always done deep breathing now at red lights which i greatly appreciate and so moments throughout the day as providers and parents are rushing um hopefully tonight there's things that you've been, been given permission for and um learn for practice um to be able to pause and uh center yourself again um i just well, want to say i love i love what you're saying about permission 
because you know permission you me all of us i think from an early age we get this message that we don't know we don't know what to do we don't know we don't know how to take care of ourselves we have to listen to experts <laughs> and those experts are somewhere and often there's a pretty steep price with that but the reality is everything we need is right here now you know that's that's so that's true right everything right and so uh, you, yeah please so are somebody you, are, you, are you somewhat speaking of basically being conscious hmm. being it's a, like a self-consciousness of your everyday life just being in every single moment to be self-conscious all the time not in a critical way but to be conscious of your everyday living so i love your illustration that you made about pouring coffee or yeah. pouring coffee and that really there is a difference yeah you know the mundane wow. as opposed to i'm aware of what i'm doing and i'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm at peace with what I'm doing. Yeah. Being conscious, consciously always aware of your peacefulness within, no matter what you're doing, when you're doing it, always finding peace in that moment. I kind of live my life like that. I'm not into yoga, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed the class because I enjoyed everything that you were teaching us in terms of the breathing, because once again, the breathing brings you to a self-consciousness. You're conscious of your surrounding, your, your every moment that you're in. And I love living life that way of being always aware. So that way things aren't slipping by you in terms of, you know, your, you know going through your everyday life and constantly busy, busy, busy. And so you're not stopping. I think that breathing and being conscious allows you to be in, in and to, to experience every moment in a very valuable way, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I love what you're saying. And, uh, you know, I sometimes remind myself of that self-awareness because like to be present every moment is like exhausting. So, and like yeah. the human condition, you know, we wave in and out. I mean, think mm -hmm. about the universe. It's like these pulsing mm -hmm. waves. So like part of that, like check out is also mm -hmm. self preservation. Yeah. Then you can, but you can consciously decide to come back in, you know? Yes. And, I, and I think the breath is almost like a built-in metaphor. You know, yep. it's there. Like when I exhale all the way out, whoa, there's that moment of possibility. Mm -hmm. And then I inhale, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, how, how do I, how deep do I need to breathe or am mm -hmm. I breathing, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yeah. I love yes. what you said. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Jim. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for participating tonight. Thank you so much, David. And just um, where can people find more information about you or connect with you? <laughs> Thanks for asking that. Um, well, I'm definitely on social media, probably like all of you. If you look for David Westlake and Anchorage, Alaska, you'll find me. There's some other David Westlakes out there, right? Um, <laughs> there's like an English, I don't know, some kind of rock singer. That's definitely not me, <laughs> but but David Westlake, uh, Anchorage, Alaska. You'll find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. And then our organization, Turia of Alaska, T-U-R-I-Y-A of Alaska. Also on Instagram and uh, also on Facebook. And if you follow us on Instagram with Turia, my wife is um, the person who um, takes care of that. And you'll see a little bit more of our, our social justice side of our kind of like just throwing some ideas out there that might be challenging, a different message than you might see in your typical kind of yoga page. Yeah. And if you're interested in any kind of trainings or cultivating some of this stuff, um, definitely not a hard sell, but just in case we run a program called Integration and we do, a, a, we call it yoga guide training. Um, we do meditation training and just work in different kinds of ways. And that also has a social social media site and in, Instagram integration, um, GT integration guide training. So that's yeah. how you'd find me. And you could always reach out, you know, I'm, I'm just like you, I'm in the world and I'd love to get messages and you. You know, feel free to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. thank you everyone. Thank you so much, David. Thank you everyone You're for welcome. participating tonight. And, um,